Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian. I am trying out a new camera, so if you can tell that there's a difference in a positive or negative way, leave me a message down below. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Today, we are diving into the Peerless High Rye Bourbon. So this is the first new mash bill that we've seen from Peerless since the original rye and bourbon mash bills. Maybe you've seen, maybe you've seen some pics of some bourbons or some ryes around. Now, Peerless is a brand, it's downtown for me on the opposite side of town, Louisville, Kentucky. And one that I've been uh, privileged, uh, I know John, uh, we work with him in regards to the coffee side of things for Stave and Bean, which is their barrel aged coffee uh, venture that, that he has there. But one thing I've learned with him doing uh, kind of the barreling, the barrel pick process is that, man, they have a lot of variants and flavors too the rise, the bourbons, all types of stuff. And maybe some of the things that I had previously tried on the shelf weren't necessarily indicative of all the flavors that you can find at Peerless. And through the pick process, either ones that I've done, done with other groups, or tried from some single barrel expressions that he has let me try, man, tons of really interesting flavors. A lot of great rise, for sure. But I've been really intrigued by the bourbons. I think I'm more impressed probably with the rise on whole than the bourbons, but the bourbons have such wide variety of flavors, which is very exciting to now see the high rye bourbon, which I would hope kind of marries the things that I like about both of the products. Another unique thing about Peerless, if you don't remember, um, strictly sweet mash. So we have a sweet mash instead of the sour mash that a lot of places do. Does that make a difference or not? I don't actually know. I don't I don't have enough experience to know uh, sweet mash versus sour mash. So I'm not going to get into that here. Non chill filtered. This is 111. Nope. 110.5 proof that we're going to pop open with this one. And one of the things that I thought was neat about Peerless was overall, the bourbons have been a bit more affordable than the rice. Now this I think brings that MSRP back up a little bit higher. This is probably I don't know, around $100 or so. And I want to say this is five and a half to six years in range on this product. But man, if you can't see, can you tell from this bottle how dark this looks here? Or even from this glass, not super assuming in this style of glass, but it is darker than some other pours that we've had. But at least, man, in that bottle, it looks awesome. And we're going to just dive right on into this puppy and see what it's like. I will say, kind of just spoiler alert, if you're a fan of Peerless, you will be a fan of this. Let's dive in. Before we get started, jump down below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Help me continue to grow the channel here in 2023. Let's dive into this nose. Man, right away, a lot of kind of herbal floral bouquet there, the kind of complexity layers that I usually look for. Maple syrup meets like a kind of a licorice candy a little bit, maybe an herbal minty candy a little bit. Maybe some banana pudding and some wafer cookies as well in there. And then kind of a dark plum. There's a lot of dark, heavier notes to this that you usually have noticed in some of the older products that we've seen out of uh, Barton or brands that kind of have some of the older release products. You've seen some of these notes and wild turkey and such before. Very dark berry mixed with leather, mixed with a little bit of oak. Really enjoyable nose there. Some nice baking spices. Man, can you see the legs on this glass? And some nice vanilla bean notes kind of coming in there as well. Some pecan, some almond notes in here. But yeah, there's just a lot of good sweetness and a, and a little bit of savoriness to this. And then it, it kind of opens with some more florals and, and some nice spice as well. Fans of Four Roses might be familiar with some of the pockets of flavor here too. Let's go ahead and dive right into the palate. Oh man, the palate, it kind of leaves a, a dry coating over the palate. And let's talk about some flavors that are in that camp. Oak, barrel char, leather, raisin, coffee bean, flavors that kind of hit the palate and they start to dry a little bit. Um, man, that is really nice first 
puree with this one on the palate. Big bursts of orange there. And then again with kind of fragrant floral bouquet that sweeps across the tongue while spice lines the side of the tongue. Very full, again with the kind of banana notes mixed with the raisin, the plum, the date, the dark fruit like notes as well. I'm kind of getting a little bit of licorice like note. It's not overly medicinal, but it's definitely there. And some kind of prominent uh, tingling and spices, again, that dance around the tongue, clove, nutmeg, all spice a little bit. For folks who aren't afraid of kind of some herbal notes for the whiskey, along with again, toasted kind of charred wood, leather, coffee, everything I kind of mentioned already, it just continues to, to lay here on the palate, really intense, really full, and, and a really great amount of spice to boot. The finish doesn't go all that long. I mean, I can still kind of taste it, but it doesn't, uh, it lingers dry. It lingers kind of trailing with the, with the memory of the spice that it had, with these kind of fragrant, perfumed-like floral spices that kind of linger on, a little bit of caramel, chocolate, coffee, leather, and oak in there as well, trailing into the finish. Now, not all the regular bourbons are overly savory. I've had some that have been pretty savory, and this uh, is a little bit more uh, balanced in that regard. I think what I like the most about it is the, the, the richness, the fullness that I get out of it and leaving these really nice spice notes. And when I get into that pocket of the perfumey, fragrant, floral-like notes as well, but not at the sacrifice of some leather and oak, that hits a pocket that I really enjoy. If you're one who likes a little bit more spiciness uh, to your pour and likes the kind of flavor camp that I'm talking about now, Keep in mind, this isn't overly oaky. It's not overly leathery, like maybe something uh, eight plus years old might be, but it's not got all the graininess, doesn't have all the youthfulness as well. So if you're someone who likes this kind of age range, but you want something that's got really great mouthfeel for one, and then just like really exceptional flavor in terms of like kind of like a floral spice thing, I think you're really gonna enjoy this high ride. Peerless. Let me know if you all have tried this one before. Let me know if you've tried Peerless at all and where you have leaned, whether you like their bourbons, their rise, or if there's a specific one that you all have enjoyed. Thanks so much for tuning in to another video, everybody. I hope it was informational to you all. And until next time, we'll see you all later.